Hello and welcome back to another Divinity Original Sin 2 video. Before we get started, this one might be a little bit longer. Uh, I'm going to have to edit it down, but it's going to be a bit lengthy video. Uh, now, a lot of people, when they get to Act 2, they are very confused on where to go. You pull up the map, you can go like, into the main town, you can go east, west, north, all over the place. They're not really sure where to go, and some people get into the issue where they don't know where to go, and they end up fighting enemies way too strong for their level. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can go from exiting the boat and entering Act 2. You can go off the boat, get right on over here. Um, I have gone into this first area, pretty self-explanatory, and I am sitting right here by some chickens. Haven't even gotten into the main part of the map yet. Um, I'm just going to show you real quick how you can get from the boat um, to about level 12. Now, I have some mods on, so normally I'd be at this point and I'd be just a little into level 10. I am currently a little over halfway through level 11. Uh, so, we're just going to see all the stuff in here, and just trust me, you can get off the boat. If you do everything in Act 1, or at least most things in Act 1, uh, if you do everything in here, it will get you to right about level 12. Uh, and the only combat you have to do involves things that are at level 9 or lower. So starting it off, uh, you're going to want Pet Pal. You can respect at the ship if you need to. And you're going to want to talk to Big Marge over here. Alright. Big Marge wants you to find her egg. Uh, one of her uh, eggs got stolen, one of her uh, chicks. Uh, and you're going to be running right over here just uh, just a little, let's see, orient this. Yeah, just north of where she's at. Uh, you're going to find some Void Woken stuff over here. Uh, this is a quick combat, but again, it is at level 9, and you should be 9 or 10 at this point. Should not be a super difficult thing for you to do. All right, after defeating those Void Woken, you can come back here. The egg will be right over here. She already named the baby chick. Its name is Peeper. And then you're going to bring it right back over here to Big Marge. Talk to Big Marge. Get 5,000 experience. And then if you want, you can also come over here and dig up the actual quest reward. The ruby there, you can sell it for some money. Nothing too crazy there. Moving on to our next easy source of experience. And our second source of experience is going to be combat, but it is at level 9. So if you don't want to do combat right away, if you're at level 9 getting off the boat, or if you somehow managed to get through Act 1 and you are below level 9, maybe do some of the other stuff on this list first and circle back. But since you are estimated to enter Act 2 at level 9, I don't think this is a super difficult combat to ask. Um, I will say, if you're on Tactician or higher, this character right here has an evasion aura that she puts on. And it'll make her and all other allies around her, or enemies for us, but her allies, it'll make all of her allies uh, have a dodge chance of 90%. Uh, you getting higher accuracy can mitigate that a little bit, but the way the percentages add up, it's not going to work very well unless you have just a ridiculous amount of extra accuracy over 100. Uh, the way you can do uh, work around that is mitigate her dodge chance. So give her negative dodge. So stuff like Worm Tremor, uh, immobilizing them, uh, putting oil on the ground, those things will all slow them down, which lowers their dodge chance by 70, which makes them a lot easier to hit. Uh, also, if you just have an all magic party, you can just go ahead and hit her. Uh, dodge doesn't affect spells, it only affects physical attacks like swords, arrows, uh, daggers, etc. Uh, so I'm gonna start this combat from range. Um, and I'm just going to go through this one real quick, and then uh, I'll get back to you guys in a minute. Okay, and upon beating them, you're going to want to go talk to Maester Siva. Uh, you can free her first. Uh, you don't have to. As long as she doesn't die mid-combat, you'll be fine. And I'm just going to one my way through that conversation. Uh, I believe you can cut her down quicker, uh, like choice number quicker. But uh, I just like to spam one a lot in dialogue. <laughs> Alright, uh, coming right up from that area, uh, you're going to find just north of there is a windmill. You're going to want to come over here and talk to this character here, Fingleboid. So you are going to want to talk to Fingleboid with somebody who has some persuasion. Uh, she's Laszlo's sister from Act 1. And uh, you can ask her if she sells anything more useful with a persuasion check. Uh, she will now become a fantastic vendor for uh, bows, arrows, magic arrows, and finesse armor. Very nice to have. Moving on from her just a little bit. Uh, you're going to find a bunch of these explosive mines here. I usually like to just go and detonate all those with a good battle stomp. 
something like that. Uh, you can use any other area effect thing. If you keep going a little bit past this gate, you will find a waypoint right here. Over there. Alright, and if you come up here once again with a persuasion person, talk to this guy, Paladin Tom Hardwin. He's in charge of these guys. Uh, he's going to give you a mission. A quest. Uh, you get 4,175 experience there. And the reason... Oh, wait till he stops talking. The reason you want high persuasion is because uh, you can ask him for an outrageous, or yeah, an outrageously unreasonable sum, a thousand gold. Um, it isn't that big a deal by the time you finish this mission from him. You'll have plenty of gold. Um, and then over here we have this dwarven worker. This isn't part of the XP, but he is a fantastic vendor for crafting ingredients. Um, magic arrows in particular, essences, grenade canisters, stuff like that, blank skill books. Chantrell lets you go invisible. Just He's got some useful stuff in here, so keep him in mind when you are buying stuff. Moving on from the Paladin camp, you're going to want to keep heading this direction here. We have north going up on our screen, so you want to come just a little bit northwest of there. And then keep following this path here. There are some scarecrows in this area down here. You probably want to avoid the scarecrows until I would say like level 11 or 12. Um, they are a bit of a tough fight. Uh, this is a witch's house, you might want to mark it down, go through there. There's not really any combat in there, but uh, I don't want to go through all that in this video right now. And that's the honest reason. Uh, that's just one of my least favorite parts of this act. Uh, it's something you got to get through. Gets a little bit of experience. But anyway, moving on up here, right north of the witch's house. Uh, yeah, north. Uh, you're going to find this guy here, Ferno. Uh, talk to him with somebody. Uh, he is actually a dying phoenix, so you get 5,000 experience just for telling him he's a dying phoenix, and then you have to burn him. Uh, any amount of fire will just instantly kill him. Uh, the fire turns to blessed fire, and then in just a couple seconds... Is... is it dead? No, Red, he is not. He is an egg! Uh, so now you have a phoenix egg right there. You get another 10,000? Is that 10,000? It looks like 10,000 experience. This, the egg. Uh, examine the, the egg. Everybody's going to say a bunch of stuff. Again. Um, you can either like eat it, find indeed. This is a find. or you can keep it. Uh, if you keep it, you have a scaly phoenix egg in your uh, inventory. And at the very, very, very end of the game, you'll have a little baby phoenix walking around on your ship if you keep the egg. Um, if you eat the egg, uh, whoever eats it will learn the phoenix dive ability. Uh, now over here I am going to drop a teleport pyramid, just for quick, uh, quick movement later. I'm going to keep moving on over here, and on the kind of center north part of the center, yeah, center north part of the island, you'll find this way shrine here, waypoint. Um, and you kind of get stuck right here, but we'll come back later and show how to get across that bridge for some more experience. But for right now, we're going to keep walking past this and go east a little bit, and uh, northeast. And try and keep the map and everything centered north being up. Uh, I'm just going to come around through here. No, I don't like that. I've got to turn the map. Sorry. <laughs> uh, now, I believe in this run I killed Danara, Dianara, I don't know, Danira, uh, the elf lady. Uh, but she would be right here, the one who's trying to collect the contamination armor. Um... I killed her because there's a little side mission over here we're going to do in just a little bit that is significantly easier with her dead. Alright, uh, moving over here, uh, there is this little elf shrine place. Uh, there you go, that just gave us some experience for walking in there. Does it give me an exact number? Nope, over here uh, looks like 10,400 exploration XP. Uh, there's a quest you can do here, but you need to fight some level 14 guys, so we're not going to do that right now. What we are going to do is keep on keeping on and move over here. Uh, once again, you're going to want somebody with high persuasion going first. I believe the persuasion check is lower with an elf, but uh, we're going to go in with red because he's got absolute maxed persuasion. There's another 5,800 XP. Talk to these guys. And just wanting your way through, there's another 5,800 experience right there. You do eat some dead flesh, you do get some disease stuff going on right there. Uh, but it's not a big deal. And 
Oh, I thought that got rid of disease. No, fortify will get rid of disease. Okay. Uh, anyway, we're going to take anybody. Talk to Tova. The that One your way through that conversation. Oh. My mind is very busy. Maybe we need to use the, the person we used that here. Is our business. Ah, yeah. She persuasion not. check. It is enough. You, but we, I want. It is so our they, she, 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 do, then you know that we, you, I, she, there you go. So if you pass the persuasion check, you know 3800 XP, 3875. Alright, uh, I usually like to drop a teleport uh, pyramid over here once I get two or three, or once I get three or four. Uh, you don't need to, but I think it's helpful. I like to go back there a lot. There's a lot of vendors there, and they're all pretty good. Anyway, once you get through there, um, this part you can use just high persuasion, but if you have Ifen, 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 why did I say Ifen? Some people call him Ifen, Ifen. If you have Ifen in your party, uh, he doesn't actually need a persuasion check, just his background character lore gets you through this part. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. And then coming in through here, so we're going to come right over here. And I'm going to use tactical retreat to hop over this area just to avoid all those traps. To avoid some of those traps. Moving on over here, if you have high enough wits, I've spotted you'll find this buried treasure here, and this buried treasure actually gives you experience for finding it. Labor, there are four treasure fire. chests like this one around the map, that gives you 5400 experience. And it'll give you Hala's shiny ribbon, uh, it gives you two finesse on the belt, sneaking thievery, very good thievery item. Um, and it's got some stuff that I need to identify, and with the mods I'm running, I just don't want to clutter my inventory. Uh, just point blank, don't want to clutter my inventory. Alright, uh, coming through here, if you have red prints, be careful not to talk to these people until you are ready for a relatively tough combat. Uh, you can walk through with red prints, totally fine, just don't talk to them until you're ready. Alright, we are back to where I dropped down that teleporter pyramid, gonna pick that right back up. And now we're gonna head away from that field's waypoint and come over here. Going to be heading west on the map. Got 3750 XP for walking through there. In the near distance, you see him. This. Now, if you have Losa in your party, you're going to get some extra dialogue here about Losa's backstory. But this is not a backstory video. Uh, there's 7,500 XP, so I'm just going to talk about how you can one your way through this if you have not gone north to that top island yet. If you've gone north of the top island, be very cautious not to one your way through. Uh, he wants you to kill a guy up on that island, and if you one your way through, uh, he will kill you. Right, he's also a very good vendor here. Jahan, Jahan, multiple people in the game say it multiple different ways. I don't know what the right pronunciation is, but he usually has some pretty good armor in here, a couple of magic arrows, not a whole lot, and all the necromancy skill books that are available at your level. Pretty good May stuff. Uh, if you kill this demon in here, you get a cool uh, hammer, but Jahan will not like you, so I would suggest not killing that demon. Alright, moving on from Jahan, you can go talk to these Magisters over here. They don't know you're a sorcerer. Best you leave the build, God. A sorceress, as it happens. Uh, keep a, a straight face. Don't uh, don't let them know you're a sorcerer. The the uh, uh, tell them you'll have a way with well, sorcerers. Or we'll you you'll have a word. You uh, don't don't betray the Magisters just yet. Um, that'll give you some experience, and I'm actually going to hop over here with Beast, because I can have him sneak and teleport, because he's got, uh, Cloak and Dagger. I'm just going to come over here. Uh, fun fact, you can pickpocket this lady right here, Hanag. She has got a lot of source books, and depending on when you get here, she's going to have some source books that you will not be able to buy elsewhere at this stage of the game. So it might be worthwhile for you to go and pickpocket some of the Tier 2 source abilities. Granted, depending on where you're at in the game, you might not be able to use them either. Uh, she has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9... Wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7... Oh, 10. Okay. So she does have every... Uh, skill book of source in the game. Uh, if you are able to get super close to her, uh, you can talk to her without being, you know, having lava teleported on you. That's her preferred method of attack. 
Um, but if you just run up to her, she will drop lava on you, and it will not be pleasant. So be careful with that. We're going to regroup. We're going to grab Losa over here because she is our Geo person. We need a Geo person so I can clear out some of that fucking lava. So if you step on lava, it does insane fire damage. Technically not an auto kill, just like enough fire damage that it may as well be an auto kill. So slightly better than Death Fog, but just slightly. Uh, from leaving there, we're going to... I'm going to hold left alt on the keyboard uh, if you're playing with a uh, controller. So there's this black root plant over here. You can hold A and get it. It is the stuff right there. Uh, you're gonna need at least one of those, but potentially two if you do things the way the game wants you to do them. And then we're gonna come over here and talk to Athene, Ethne, Eth Ethne. Uh, 3750, just for getting here. Uh, I am going to have Beast come over here and pickpocket her. Uh, grab some of the stuff she's got there. Uh, ch -ch -ch. may as well get that ring, uh, may as well get some of the higher level polymorph skills, or just polymorph skills that I want in general, um, and she's got some necromancy, you may as well get some of those as well. However, the main thing you want to do with Ethne is you want to make sure you have a Corpse Explosion skill book. So I'm going to take uh, something like Fireball. I'm not going to use another Fireball. And Bloated Corpse. I don't think I'm going to use another Bloated Corpse to teach anybody that. That will make a uh, Corpse Explosion. Um, I am talking to her with Losa, so I'm going to... I was going to send it to Losa. It looks like it's already in Losa's inventory. Crafting inventory is weird when you make what stuff. You her voice is uh, tell her you're Even not the on the side of she the black ring, now, quickly. and uh, have you'll books. be fine. I She's not. I am and he, that's uh, if you won your way through, you'll eventually get brought to this menu where you can in, uh, trade with her. Give her a corpse explosion. If you want to get some other stuff from her, go for it. Uh, I am going to grab a couple of scrolls. Don't know if I really need haste with the all glass cannon team, but fuck it, we'll get it. Uh, once you give her a corpse explosion, she gives you another 13,000. And then uh, then we're going to run over here real quick. And you're going to see this like shipwreck over here. A uh, bunch, of, bunch of shipwrecky stuff. Uh, and you're going to want to get as close to the edge over here as you can. And just teleport down there with something. That'll work. You'll get a waypoint discovered over here. A quick little shortcut into a uh, mission objective area over here for later. Which I'm going to go in real quick. And upon entering that cave, you get another 1,400 experience. Not nearly as much as some of the other stuff we've gotten lately for explore exploring. Um, but it's not bad. And you're going to come over to this little rock and hop over here. I believe you get some experience for coming in this little boat here. Yes, 5,800. Uh, you'll see the captain's compass Some amulet over there. Uh, if you do not have telekinesis, you can teleport and move it over there. Uh, it gives you two lucky charm, can be very useful if you're, uh, if you're into that kind of thing. And then we are going to go back to the town square of Driftwood. Uh, which is kind of the main safe zone central hub of the act. Uh, this is where Bree is keeping it together. And uh, yeah, it's a nice little uh, home base, kind of, outside of the shit. Uh, if you talk to the noble's dog here, uh, you can run your hand under his collar, realize that uh, the beggar here has the collar turned inside out, so the dog whimpers in pain, so people feel bad and give him more money. Anyway, it gives you 5,000 experience for figuring that out. Uh, we're going to come over here to the docks and talk to Magister Raymond. He's a level 12 Magister, so probably above your uh, pay grade right now. Uh, but if you just won your way through, he will give you a uh, writ of passage. I believe the persuasion check there isn't actually needed. Uh, but that's going to give you 2,000 experience. He's going to just kind of go away. 
Um, and we'll come back there in a little bit for some more side quest action. Uh, moving on over here, you're going to want somebody with pretty high wits. Uh, for me, I'm going to go with, let's see, we got 17 there, 11, 14, 17. We're just going to go with Fane. I'm going to have Fane boost his wits a little bit more with peace of mind. Get that up to 24. Where is it? Talk to Where is Dashing it? June. Last. She rubbed. There isn't any chance you could spare him a tear. I know. Uh, oh. Talk through here Majesty and be nice her. to her. Do Don't give her her money, though. Never. Just she keep an eye out. Uh, if you have high wits, you'll notice she's trying to steal from you. At that point, you can one your Take way through these. the conversation, and she gives you fancy gloves. Uh, fancy gloves are another just fantastic thievery item. I've done a video about how to get those before, so we're just going to keep moving on. Uh, over here, there is a Magister uh, murder that people are investigating. We're going to look into that a little bit more in just a minute. Uh, but coming over here, we have the Under Tavern. Uh, the Bouncer, Papa Thrash, knows Beast. Uh, so if you have Beast or Iphen in the party, Papa Thrash will just let you come right on down here. And we get 3,000 experience for coming down here. We're going to go to the Way Shrine over here just to get... Or Waypoint. I keep calling them Way Shrines. They're Waypoints. I think it's some other game. They're called Way Shrines. But you're going to come down here to the Waypoint. Uh, you're going to find uh, Aran, Aaron, I don't know, the raucous one. You're going to find this dude down here right next to the Waypoint. He's a decent vendor. He was very good pre-Definitive Edition, and then Definitive Edition nerfed the hell out of his inventory. Uh, he was He was great. He is now a shadow of his former self, but he's still pretty good. Uh, coming over here, you're going to find Lohar. Alright, uh, Lohar is going to give you some more side quest stuff. I believe you can one your way through this. Uh, Beast is going to have some words with him. Alright, uh, so Beast had his words with him, now I'm talking to him. I could help you. Yeah, I should have talked to the high persuasion person. Right, so he wants you to go investigate this guy Mortis's house. Uh, we're gonna go do that actually. Uh, but first, we're gonna go back to the Driftwood Square. Come over here once again. We've done no combat thus far that is against anybody higher than level nine, which is the starting level for the act. We started off level 11, we're partway through level 12. Uh, with no mods, you should be 9, you'd probably be around 10 right now. Alright, uh, you can tell him whatever you want there, get 2,000 experience, uh, another 2,000 experience. Okay. So he wants you to find dirt on the dwarves, just talk to him, gets you a few thousand experience, which is very helpful. Uh, now, Lohar is going to be over here. Well, Lohar isn't, but Lohar's house is going to be over here uh, to the west of the waypoint. Now, if you really want to get some extra experience, you can kill this sleeping dwarf right here and then go underneath uh, the chair there into the basement. Uh, but I'm just going to, you know, wake her up and use persuasion because I don't feel like murdering her right now. I don't need to with these mods to get the extra experience, but if you really want to squeeze it all out, kill her first, then come down. Uh, but you'll get 5,000 experience there. So come down into Morse's basement. You can go and lockpick this, do some other side quest stuff. But at the moment, there's no easy XP over there. So we're going to come over here and just hit this lever. It's going to unlock this door, let these guys out. Once again, if you really want to squeeze out some XP, you can kill these guys. Uh, I would suggest doing that by attacking them with somebody not in conversation with them. Uh, but I really don't need the experience right now. Uh, I'm going to be overleveled on this run anyway. Uh, but you can uh, kill them for some more experience. Uh, run around, loot his stuff. Uh, the main thing you're going to want to get is not in this chest. It's not in this chest either. Uh, moving that over, moving that over, moving that over. It is in this little bookshelf back here. Uh, there is a letter to Mortis. And there is some schematics. Uh, so we are going to go to the Under Tavern and give that to Lohar. You can also find your way out of there normally because that door did just lock behind us. So talking to Lohar, you can give him the letter you found, get 2,000 experience. One your way through. All right. 
then go back to the Driftwood Square. I don't care if we tear this place apart plank by plank. You'll be warned. You us if we Alright, come into this little fishery over here. Alright, now this place uh, has some uh, shady business dealings going on. Uh, the main one you're going to be concerned with is over here. You're going to want somebody with high sneaking and preferably high thievery. I don't know what the minimum uh, thievery is you need to lockpick that, but if you sneak and then hit that little uh, hatch there, you can sneak right on in. 3,000 experience for coming in here. Uh, this is going to be one of the actual combat parts again. Uh, so we're going to come right over here open this up but again this will all be level 9 combat so I'm gonna do it real quick but I'm gonna just edit it out because this isn't a combat video this is a little task list you can do to get to level 12 before having to do combat so we'll be right back all right so once you kill those void woken uh, you can take the weapons that you got head back to the square and you can talk to uh, also, there were weapons in a chest down there. I'm not sure if I edited the video up before that or if I'm going to remember to go back and edit it up before showing that, but there were some weapons in that room with all the Void Woken. Uh, I'm just going to bring them back to Magister Julian. Uh, inform him you found a cache of source weapons hidden in that factory. Uh, he'll give you some money, and then he kind of just tells you, uh... Find a dwarven base. That's actually the cave we teleported to earlier. Alright, so after talking to the Magister about the source-infused weapons, we're going to come into the uh, bar here, the pub, whatever you want to call it. Uh, with Red Prince, we're going to talk to Lovric, or whoever your persuasion person is. Uh, ask for something with a little more spice, sugar, whatever the hell it is. Sugar, okay? Uh, if you have high persuasion, uh, you can pay him $100, uh, get some experience there. Uh, come up here. Actually, you kind of don't want to do that with Red Prince, but it's fine. Um, we are then going to talk to Prudence with high persuasion. Uh, she'll give you a key. Uh, actually, she'll give you some stew, but if you keep talking to her, she'll give you a key to Niles the Flenser's childhood room, which is a fun place to go visit. Uh, we're going to buy some stew, meaty stew, right. and take our leave. Uh, bef well, yeah, we'll head back up here real quick. Uh, we're going to head upstairs in the inn. In the inn. That sounds funny. Alright, coming up here. Uh, if you have somebody with the jester tag, you can talk to this chest. Uh, kick it, swear under your breath, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I actually messed it up. Uh, the chest riddle says, speak the word and open. If you just say the word... It opens, you get 3,000 experience, you can then get some stuff out of here. It's nothing crazy, but you get some experience for figuring out the riddles just to say the word. Uh, coming over here is Niles the Flinzer's childhood room. He's got some stuff in here. Some of it's weird, some of it's just normal little kid room stuff. Alright, uh, coming up here. Uh, now, we used red, which makes this side quest a little bit different, actually. But we are going to come up here. And it's going to freeze up on us, which has been happening a lot lately. Through all the editing, I'm going to try and cut it out the parts where the game freezes up or goes super slow. Uh, but it's been quite a bit. Uh, we're going to go to Books and Keys and the one that Red has right here, the Sweet Key. Just give it to literally anybody else after he's entered this area by himself. Uh, if you won your way through, uh, you sleep with the lizard there. But if you're Red Prince... Uh, you wake up next to the Red Princess, which is completely different. Alright, now the actual next thing on the list is to do the main plot. Um, now, you're in Act 2, uh, you know your sorcerer, you've escaped the island, you know your god woken, you're supposed to become the next divine. Hooray! Uh, the next step in that is talking to Maester Siva, who will help you along that journey. Uh, so, we're gonna come over here. The Meister sits. That, that, oh, that she in wish. Alright, and we're just gonna go downstairs. I'm gonna skip down to that part real quick. Uh, all you gotta do is hit the button there and then hit the little lock key pass over here. Alright, so if you have not done this part of the story before, we are going to need to take this obsidian lancet from her little cabinet there, uh, use it, which will cut yourself a little bit. 
Uh, we're then going to combine that with some black root, a ritual bowl we got from her, and that bloody dagger there. It's going to make this little, uh, I don't know what you call it, ritual bowl. Uh, you don't need to put it here. I'm going to put it here because this is the default place the game has it set up for. Uh, but what I am going to do is take this hunting blade that you can get from Gareth's parents. Uh, put it right up there, and we are going to have... Uh, faint. We're going to have Faint equip that right there, and then we're going to have him equip that dagger. Now, that is a dagger created by the mod, so I'm not 100% sure that this will work. As the smoke, as the world fades away, and actually, I'm pretty sure this only works with humans, and Faint is considered a but you could feel yourself wizard through. undead for the god conversation here, so I'm not sure if this one will actually work with him. I don't think it will. Uh, but if you have a human main character that goes through these little visions, and you have them equipped with this, um, I know for a fact that your god as a human will have that dagger in their inventory if you pickpocket them. Alright, he's got the tyrant's helmet. That's upsetting. Uh, divine favor, though. Ooh. Priceless and pointless. Um, anyway, you learn spirit vision here, and this is where one of our biggest sources of experience is actually going to come. Uh, is from Spirit Vision. Uh, so we're going to one our way through the rest of that. Alright, so unfortunately the dagger trick does, I guess, only work with human gods, or it's because this was made from the mod and not from the actual game. I'm not sure which, uh, but I did duplicate the helmet that Fane's wearing, so that's cool. Um, although that one should have leveled up with me, and I'm not sure why it hasn't, so that's a little strange. With the mods I'm running, at least it's a little strange. Uh, normally that's... yeah, it shouldn't level up. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, so now we have Spirit Vision, which allows us to see ghosts. Um, and ghostly things. Uh, so we are going to waypoint back to the fields. And we're going to get across this bridge here that isn't really here here. We're going to get right up here as far as we can go. Um, I guess uh, we do still have Spirit Vision on for another turn, but we're going to reset the timer on that with Beast. And we are going to hop over here. Yeah, then we're going to have him learn... Uh, some wings. Oh, does he not have enough polymorph for that? Alright, I guess we're not learning wings today, folks. Uh, we're just going to be waiting. Actually, we're not going to be waiting. I don't want to wait. We're going to have somebody else come over here. Teleport beast. You need three total jumps to get through here. Cause I don't think you can jump right there from the get-go. You might be able to get onto that corner from the get-go and do it in two jumps. But I am now going to hop over here. And we've been getting, like, the high end, like, 10,000-ish experience. That one just gave us 36,000 experience. Uh, ignore her. She's only here because I have a mod on. Yeah, we are now in Blood Moon Island. I'm going to skip through that conversation. And then we're going to come over here from that gate. And get the waypoint. Once you've got the waypoint, uh, you can have somebody else in the party go to the Blood Moon Island waypoint. Rest up. And then this one you do need quite a lot of wits for. But there is another secret hidden uh, dig spot. I'm not really sure what they're called. I guess dig spot. But it is right over here. Now, I don't know if this is going to be enough wits, but we're about to find out. It is enough wits. Wonderful. Uh, it's a big dig spot right there. And this will lead you to a vault. Uh, so we got, you know, we were getting around like five to 10,000 experience before this island gave us 30,000. Going in here will get us... 14,000. Uh, and then up there it was like seven something. Alright, if you come here, you'll get the main thing that you need for a later quest. Maybe it's not there. Maybe it's right there, Archivist Journal. 
Uh, and there's some other stuff as well, particularly in this pile right there. You'll find Ornate Hymnal, hymnal which is very important for a later quest, and that gets you 14,000 experience. I found something. You can come right on through there, grab this piece of anathema, this unusual blade, which is another quest for later on. Uh, you don't get the experience for that until you talk to Tarquin later. Uh, we can have Fane lockpick this, and then somebody with source can, can open it, and that'll get us another teleport pyramid. Alright, and then we're going to get out of here by going to the Blood Moon Island waypoint. And now from here, we're just going to come back up to that little entry point and head more west-ish. West and then south. Try not to go in the middle of the map by the big tree. It will have some combat if you do that. So we will find the Advocate over here. Um, and the Advocate will give you an extra source point, get you through uh, the plot. Uh, if you're trying to avoid the villain tag or trying to do the... Uh, the, far off the uh, end game thing where you never do anything, where you murder or take souls or whatever, this will fuck that up. But there's nine and a half thousand experience. Alright, and then uh, yeah, we got another source point right there. And that gave us a little bit of experience doing that. Uh, oh, we got a chest here too. Uh, but that uh, is Blood Moon Island, getting you some experience walk around. Got you 36,000 for coming onto the island. Uh, we're going to do one more little murder investigation in the main uh, town, town square here. And that will give us, I believe, most of the non-combat related experience. Actually, nope, I got one more thing on my list here after that. Anyway, there is a murder, a magister murder or magister disappearances going on. Um, and we're going we're gonna to solve that real quick. Uh, before we get into that, I keep adding more stuff to the list here. Uh, we're going to talk to this guy here, Trader Thun. We're going to get any Void Tainted fish from him. Alright. I'm actually also going to get a Void Tainted Yellow Ridgeback just to show you guys a cool little thing in a second. Uh, explain you're just browsing, yada yada. So what we are going to do here is we're going to take ingredients, right? We're going to find... The void tainted fish in here. They're not in ingredients because I'm dumb. They're in consumables. Uh, we're going to take the meaty stew. Put that right there. Uh, we're going to take a void tainted fish right there and combine those to get tainted stew. All right. And then just for fun, I'm going to show you a void tainted. I know this used to only work with the yellow ridgeback, so I'm going to try it with the yellow ridgeback right now. Uh, but if you do a yellow ridgeback, that's void tainted, sheet of paper, and then a tormented soul. I believe it has to be high quality or more. If you combine those, you will get a curse scroll, which allows you to cast curse, which is the opposite of bless, doesn't cost any source, it's fantastic. I'm actually going to buy another one worth it from him just to uh, test it. We'll do the void tainted. I, I'm not good with fish it's names. Pylus, Pleus, I don't know what the hell it was. Uh, but we are going to try that one more time, just so that you guys watching will know, hey, it doesn't work with these guys. How do you say that? Place? I don't, I don't know what the fuck fish names are. Uh, we're going to do a sheet of paper and another tormented soul. Alright, it does work with all fish. It used to only work with the yellow ridgeback. I guess they patched that out because it was never supposed to be that way. Uh, but coming over here, uh, there's this guy, Garvin, who is kind of a dick. Right, we're going to talk to him. Uh, we're going to give him the Tainted Stew. Uh, the Tainted Stew uh, has some issues with it, and it's going to make him have to go shit himself. So we are going to not let him do that. We're going to we're gonna beat the... We're going to shake him down while he's got to poop. So after killing Garvin, you can grab his head. Uh, well, we'll grab the batter key there, too. Now... Here's something we're going to do that uh, most people forget about after Act 1, is use Fane's Mask of the Shapeshifter. Alright, we're going to use that to shapeshift into an elf, and we're going to eat some stuff here. Alright, 
Uh, we are now going to, as Losa, I'm doing Losa because she has bartering, um, going up one as a human. Uh, so if you eat Garvin's head Garvin, as an elf, it will give you a permanent uh, trade secrets, plus one to bartering. Uh, and that sticks with you forever. And then when I take off the shapeshifting mask and go back to a human, I get another plus one bartering. So we're going to keep that, but we're going to stay shapeshift as an elf. And we are going to eat the stew that we bought the earlier. She comes and thrust. All right, and we now have visions of the cook over here getting, uh, just, we have visions of her killing a magister, which, uh, is not, not a good thing for her to be doing, you know, not, it's not friendly. Uh, we're gonna come over here and talk to this guy, Stuart. We're gonna try and double up here on the quest XP, you gotta be real fast with it. Uh, come so on. I'm going Life to leave it. that teleport pyramid there and move the red one right here. An elf in so many, a floorball. What are you doing, elf? I'm no elf. Okay. Do, 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 do. Yeah, he he hates elves. He's a magister loyal to the list, even though he is an elf. If you hear three magisters, uh, ask what he knows so about what I have to keep appearances. Keep the pressure up. The culprit will make uh, a mistake. You do that. Just say he'll keep an eye out. Okay. So you got some experience for talking to him about it. I'm gonna talk to this guy over here. Oh, I... Anyway. Uh, we're gonna come over here, and we're gonna talk to a Magister Captain, Magister Carver. And, uh, he also wants us to investigate the murders. Okay. So, I'm gonna reveal to him that I tried some of the stew, and it contained Magister flesh. I'm gonna do that. Hurry up through the conversation, go over here, talk to him again, and tell him that the stew has magister meat in it. Okay, they patched that out. You used to be able to, if you talked to him really fast before this person came over here and died, uh, you could get experience from both of them. Uh, but anyway, she's gonna get one shot in just a second. No, I'm afraid you're not. I think. Bellworth, gonna get one shot. I know they level up with my mod, but, uh... Yeah, there we go. It seems like someone's been telling tales. Oh, now you... Alright. Anyway, we're gonna kill her now for some experience and be right back. Alright, and I actually leveled up from killing her. Now, granted, I am a little bit higher level because of my mods, but the mods are also making the enemies a little bit higher, so uh, I think it scales where if I leveled up there, you may have leveled up from that much experience at the normal level. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but you have a ring uh, from there, which is your proof to this magister that the chef was killing people. So you bring the ring back over to this guy, and you finish up that quest and get a little bit more quest experience. From here, we're going to actually go back to where we started the video, over by the chickens. And at this point, you should notice that uh, all the chickens are dead except for Peeper. Uh, if you talk to Peeper, uh, Peeper will follow you now. Um, if you use Spirit Vision and talk to Big Marge, uh, she'll tell you that the Magic Cockerel is Peeper's father. Uh, and he is over here by the elves that we found somewhere, right over here. Uh, so we're just going to run over there, which I'm going to slide the screen over right here where that's at, give you guys a somewhat coherent straightaway-ish. Uh, right over here, it's right past that waterfall by the field's waypoint, and this little uh, chicken hut here, and I'm just going to skip over to when we get there. Alright, so we are over here at the Magic Cockerel. There are two ways you can go about this. Uh, so, Peeper's gonna recognize, uh, the Magic Cockerel as his father. You know, he's got, like, evil eyes. They're just dead eyes. He's been corrupted by the Void. Okay. And then, uh, oh, I thought that you could talk him out of, uh, having to kill him. Okay. Anyway, there are a bunch of Void Woken Chicks that he summons up. Uh, they won't be at level 14. I'm at level 14 because of mods. Uh, you kill them all, and half of them have, I mean, not half of them. Some of them have Source Orbs. So you get a lot of sorcerers by doing this, and a little bit of experience. So I'm going to skip through to the end of this right about now. 
So anyway, after that, you can go through and loot all the Void Woken Chicks. Some of them have Source Orbs, which is very nice. You can also sell the Source Orbs for a pretty good chunk of money. Uh-huh. And I believe the main one, which should just still say Peeper, but I don't see that one. Oh, Void Woken Hatchling. Uh, the one that says Hatchling is Peeper. Uh, that one will always have a Source Orb. All the ones that say Chicks may have a Nebulous Crystal. Uh, and some may have a, uh, source orb. Alright, uh, and now the last thing that does not involve combat, uh, is going to require that we go double check our inventory first. So let me finish looking for source orbs. Okay. So, in your consumables, you are going to need at least three, nope, you're going to need at least four, uh, body parts. Um, I have five. I have them right there. Alright, uh, you don't need them right away, but you will need them at some point. So we're actually going to go back to the Driftwood Dunes. Right where we started. Now, I'm doing this one near the end here, because this one does require combat. Um, and I just wanted to make sure that we did this one after you would have hit level, at least level 10. Probably level 11 at this point with stuff we've done. But this one involves like an actual full combat with armor and stuff. Whereas the other ones are like Void Woken where they have no armor and you just kill them real, real easy. Alright, so we're going to come over here to this gate. The little boy um, oh. Take his take or leave, don't need to talk to him. Uh, we're going to jump over here. Come up this way. Uh, and actually, I'm pretty sure I still left the... Um, Actually, I'm going to do that. I'm pretty sure I left the red teleporter pyramid back in the square, so I'm actually going to use this green one to go to that red one. Yep, pick that one back up, and then use that red one to go back to the green one. Okay. And then pick that green one back up. All right, so we've got some Void Woken over here. We get 4,000 experience just for walking around. All right, now these guys are at level 9. They're not too difficult, um, but, you know. Uh, there's three of them, and a fourth one spawns in uh, partway through. So, uh, we're just going to kill them real quick, and then I'll be right back. All right, after killing those Void Woken, uh, the Bridge Keeper and her kid will be reunited. And you get a little quest reward there, uh, but it doesn't look like any extra money. Uh, from there, we are going to go into this little well over here. There's some more stuff you can explore in this area, but it doesn't give you a whole lot. Uh, so I'm just going to go right into the well here. I feel like that's the easiest way to do this next bit. There's more than water down here. I wonder where it leads. So you get 3,000 just for walking in over here. And we are going to want to go towards the side with the waterfall. And we're going to teleport Losa, who we still have as an elf. So we're going to teleport Losa over there. And then we're going to have her use tactical retreat to get from that ledge up top here. And then we are going to use our red pyramid to go to our blue pyramid, and that gets all the rest of our party up here. And we are going to turn Losa back into her normal self. Um, I think she just had, like, that one on, maybe? Doesn't really matter which hood she had on. We'll be changing them out shortly off screen here in a couple of sessions. Uh, you talk to Betty the turtle here, and you, she will tell you that she is in love with this rat over here. Uh, so in order to get the rat to go over to the turtle, uh, you're going to need to set some food out in some old school Tom and Jerry-esque trap. Uh, so we're just going to put some tomatoes over here. You can have them a little bit more spaced out than this, but I'm going to keep them pretty close together. Uh, that way I don't risk the rat running back to the beginning. I think you can do it with like a minimum of like three or four pieces of food. Once the rat gets close, the rat will start to follow the line of food. Oh, you stupid little rat. Okay. 
Uh, that's why I didn't want... Uh, 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 there he goes, there he goes. So he's just going to keep going and eating the food. And then once he gets close enough to the turtle, they got the little purple heart swirly line stuff. And then you talk to the turtle. And you get 7,000 experience for uh, getting the rat to go talk to the turtle. Uh, come over here and go up the stairs. Be honest with the skull here and tell it you are Godwoken. We'll speak more there. All right, so the last thing we're going to be doing is exploring the graveyard. Uh, sorry, the last thing we're going to be doing without comment. I keep saying the last thing, and there's been like three more things since then. Sorry about that. I keep remembering things. It's rough. Uh, but if you have a... Uh, you need a lizard. doesn't have to be red, but you need a lizard with, I believe, the scholar tag to talk to this guy here. Uh, he will give you a password to a chest in the graveyard and give you 7,000 experience. You can't get that without a lizard with the, I believe, scholar tag. Might be noble, might be both. Uh, but you need a lizard to talk to that guy. Alright, on your way through the conversation with him, he wants you to get some stuff. Super not important right now, but that'll get you some experience. Uh, you come up here, and this is the area that required us to have some fleshy bits in our inventory. Alright, so with the way people are currently looking around, we're gonna have Red the talk to this bedding. guy and turn his vision cone over there. And then we're going to have Fane come on over and pick that lock. Uh, so we're the, I'm counting the graveyard as one thing to do, by the way, as far as one more thing we got to do. Uh, there's more than one more thing, but I was picturing the whole graveyard stuff as one thing. Uh, if you talk to the cat and dog, you can settle an argument over which one of them their owner loves more. And you get 7,000 experience. I don't think it really matters which one you go with. Uh, we're going to read this book here. Uh, because that will help us with another quick little side quest in the graveyard later. don't believe there's anything else in here that helps out with experience. Uh, there's no script for this, by the way. I'm just kind of winging it off memory. So sorry about that. I'm going to read that assassination contract. I don't know if it matters to anything. Yeah, journal update. Okay. Um, and then we're going to come over here and just turn this guy the so he's facing... Seven. Nope. The masked turn this guy so he's facing that way, and then Fane is going to come over here and pick this lock. I'm having Fane pick the locks instead of Beast because Fane has the skeleton bony fingers, and he doesn't need to waste a lockpick. I'm going to use Red because he's got the highest persuasion. I'm going to have him come over here and uh, do this uh, little bit of experience for us right here. Uh, big Spider comes down, the Weaver. Alright, um, tell her that you don't answer Riker. Listen to her story attentively. Tell her that you'd happily give her someone else's flesh to spare your own. At that point... Uh, find the person that you actually have the flesh parts with. I think I have them all on fame. Where, where's our, where's our, there we go. Give her a chunk of flesh. Mm. The spiders. Time for your generous That'll give you 10,000, yeah, 10,000 experience. Um, then we're going to take the other fleshy bits, give them to red. Uh, we need three more. Alright, and then we're gonna give her those three. The spider. And then she will give you spider silk gloves. Uh, they just give you resistance to poison, and uh, it causes you to inflict poison when you contact somebody. Uh, there's a mod uh, I like using uh, that makes them also give you the spider web power, which is kind of cool. Just a nice little bonus thematically. Alright, uh, so we are going to come over here, and I believe Beast is sneaky enough. 
We're gonna have Beast read this book right here and then pick it up. All right, all right, yeah, let's get over here. We were sneaking, but he still noticed a robbery, which is upsetting. Uh, and then we're gonna come over here and get the third one of those books, read it, grab it. And now Beast has too much shit to carry, which is fantastic. We don't need it out of that. We can sell that, though. We can just... Uh, da -da -da -da. Let's, let's get rid of these green pants. Just, just drop them. That's plenty. Okay. Well, that was... Oh, that wasn't Beast's bag. Whoops. Uh, let's just send that up to Fane. Alright, uh, we haven't gotten the waypoint yet in the graveyard. We're going to go to the waypoint. over here. Now there are a couple other little quests in the graveyard, but they involve combat, and I'm trying to show uh, only combat at level 9 or lower, and they actually are at level 11 in the combat, or in the graveyard. So we're not going to do any of the combat-related quests in the graveyard, but there's one or two things we can do here. Again, could do this right from the boat, level 9, no issues whatsoever. Alright, coming over here to that waypoint. I know from the waypoint it is right there. So we read those three books, right? Those three books let us pick some answers uh, when talking to this guy. Uh, he's kind of a prick. Uh, but that's all right. He's gonna give us a little bit of experience. The skeleton tries to brush so I don't know why the right. spirit the was stuck underground. Maybe it is the whole body. It is the whole see? body. Okay. Are you the anyway, so you are going I'm to. Sure you'll be just fine. Oh, uh, all right, Mr. Yeah, agree George. to his Try bargain. In a show of all right. When he asks you questions, pick the third the one. No that's man, the I one. No. that the books give you. The uh, you could also pick the undead well. ones, the but I'm going to go with the number three option because that's the one that the books give you. Uh, once you answer three questions correctly, he dies of, I don't know, n uh, narcissism. Uh, but he dies, you get some experience, then he drops the Mass Corpse Explosion book, which is nice. You get almost 10,000 experience. It's all pretty good. Uh, Tarquin is around one of these gates, but we're gonna go through this gate right here. I found something. I found something. Did you already find something? Oh yeah, that part here. These are lizard remains. You lay your hand. So Let's with those lizard done. remains, you we're gonna talk to this lizard spirit here. Ask him what's the matter. Say so you found his remains, and then we gotta go put it in the eternal fire. Alright. Uh, one more thing right outside. Yeah, one more thing for the eighth time. Uh, one more thing right outside the graveyard here. Uh, there is another dig site with a chest. Uh, you can find the location of these chests actually in the graveyard. They'll be marked on your mini map. Uh, but that's another 10,000, and you get some unique gear there. Alright, going back into the graveyard now. Uh, do, 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 do. We need to get to the Eternal Pyre, which is in a straight line from here somewhere, but I forget which direction. This way, maybe? Ah, this way, this way. Uh, you can do some stuff over here. Level 11 combat. I'm not going to go do it. We are going to come over here to the Pyre. This is the last thing in the graveyard for right now. There's more stuff to do in the graveyard, but for non above level 9 combat stuff is the last thing to do in the graveyard. Uh, we can check in on that dead lizard. I guess didn't need to do that. Uh, we will teleport this chest out of the fire. Uh, and then we can just do that, put the fire out. And then Red Prince talk to that little lizard guy. And we can use the password the salamander taught us. Get almost 4,000 experience. Get some legendary tier stuff. Alright. And then we're going to come up here to consumables. This is the lizard leg. We're going to put that in the pyre. 
guess we gotta put it more in the middle of the pyre. You have done there we go, there's another 7,000 experience for cremating the lizard the way he wanted. We're just gonna keep the knockdown arrowhead. Uh, and then over here with the new uh, armor set, no, no, they're not even new anymore. With the relics of Rivalon armor sets, let me come over here. Uh, and grab power stuff. A uh, quick little 150. Not a whole lot of experience there. Alright, and then if you use Spirit Vision and you have Red Prince in the party, you'll find a Lizard Dreamer. Alright, and uh, you'll just get some journal updates for the Red Prince. No actual experience there. And that is actually the last thing in the graveyard. The last, last thing is going to be killing magisters. Uh, they're at level 9. If you do everything we just did in the video, you should be well above level 9. There's some magisters over here you can kill. They'll send out two more magisters here to investigate, kill them. Uh, you can kill the magisters inside the town here. Uh, if you do it by directly attacking magisters, the townsfolk will not attack you. And the reason you want to do that, all that bleh, the reason you would want to do all of that is because there is the guy who is suspected of killing the magisters that the uh, the cook actually killed. The guy who is suspected of killing them is hiding out in this little uh, fish shack thing. I don't I don't know what to call this fishery. I don't know if that's the thing. Uh, but they're in one of these barrels back here, which you have to take the most weird roundabout course ever to get there. I don't know why there's not just a door on that wall. Uh, but you come in here, and he is in this barrel Behind right the containers, there. You have to help me. Um, and I'm going to uh, just let him know that I'm going to come back for him later. So, say you'll help, but he needs to wait a little bit longer. I'm sure you'll be right back. Sure. All right, uh, and then you're going to kill all the magisters. Shouldn't be too difficult. And then just escort him out. You escort him out by just walking through the town square over here. If you don't kill the magisters first, he'll get into combat, and he self-destructs and kills himself. And it has a good chance of killing most of your party because it does a lot of damage. But anyway, that is all of the exploration XP, side quest XP that doesn't involve higher than level 9 combat. Uh, that you can get, like, up to about level 12 right away uh, as soon as you get to Act 2. Um, I got to level 13 and uh, about a little over a third of the way in, and I started at 11. Considering the way XP scales exponentially in this game, uh, that should have been able to get you from 9 to just about 12. If not, killing the magisters around here will get you there. Um, that took me about two hours of recording. I'm going to try and edit the video down to, like hopefully around half an hour because uh, two hours would be absurd for this um yeah that is it for this video 